This is the Edge of Innovation, Hacking the Future of Business. I'm your host, Paul Parisi. And I'm Jacob Young. On the Edge of Innovation, we talk about the intersection between technology and business, what's going on in technology, and what's possible for business. Hello, and welcome to the Edge of Innovation. Today, we're talking with Dan Frazier from Cornerstone Commissioning Incorporated. So I've known you a while, and I have to be honest, I don't know what Cornerstone Commissioning means. What does commissioning mean? So commissioning is a process that's used in the construction industry to verify the performance of buildings. So it's mostly, for us anyway, it's mostly related to mechanical engineering. Okay. It's mostly related to mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems, but also life safety. And we have a special focus on building control systems. So most ordinary people have maybe built a house at the extreme. Do we do commissioning in a house? We actually have done a few houses, but that really? would be a very high-end home. Okay. So what is, let's give me an example, you know, no names, nothing, just what does it actually mean? So they're building a new school. Is somebody actually going to be doing the commissioning part of the new school? Most schools today, if it's a significant project, are going to have commissioning related to it. Um, okay. There will be two primary types of suppliers of commissioning services. We are involved in the MEP, the Mechanical Electrical Plumbing, okay. Life Safety, Building Control side of things. The other version would be the building envelope, so the building enclosure. Okay. For people that focus on the enclosure of the buildings for energy, for air tightness, and we have subs who do that work. On some of our projects, there'll be higher end projects where it's a net zero building. It's a highly energy efficient building okay. that actually may have some other kind of power generation with it, so it never takes anything off the grid. Well, but we'll get into that. Really good envelope. Again, let's step back. You're really close to this. We're talking to relatively ordinary people, yeah. and the the local town is going to be building a new high school. And you're saying there's two aspects to commissioning with that: the envelope, the outside walls, yes. and the roof. And even the floors? Yes. Okay. And then there's also like the plumbing, electrical, mechanicals, the heat pumps and the heaters and furnaces and air conditioning systems. Is that, am I accurate in that? Yes, that's accurate. Okay. So what do you do? I mean, does the architect sort of say, we're going to put all this stuff in and then you guys come back and make sure it works? Or do you make sure they put in the right stuff? What happens? So because we're verifying the performance of a building, Okay. And we want to make sure that that is verified relative to what the owner of the building really needs. Okay. The right way to integrate us into a project is during the design phase. Okay. And so the way that happens is typically, I would say over 90% of the time, a building owner is going to hire us directly. Okay. They're going to hire the architects and engineers directly, and they'll hire the contractors to actually build it. So the reason we like to be hired during the design phase is because we get to know buildings so intimately uh -huh. how well they perform that during the design phase is the best time to start thinking about how well the building is going to operate to meet the owner's needs. Okay. And so during the design phase, we'll be reviewing the designs by the architects and engineers. Okay. And then some of the more complicated projects, we're going to be hired to do a program evaluation as well. Okay. So we, we specialize in some pretty unique buildings. And so we're going to ask questions that perhaps nobody thought to ask because we know how difficult it is to get these buildings to work right if they have mission critical requirements. Okay. So let me let me rehash that a little bit. So let's say I'm the owner, okay, and I say, gee, I want to build this private high school or even a, I'm just going to build a high school. Yeah. I have to hire a, an architect, a builder, and I imagine not engineers. The architect would hire the engineers? Typically. Okay. Yeah, the so design engineers work as a sub All right. So, so I, I hire a builder. I hire an architect, and I hire a commissioning company like you guys. Yes. Who else do I have to have at that table? There's four of us now, me and those three guys. That generally covers everything that you're going to need. There may be some other unique things that would be permitting people or code related okay. people. That usually falls right. under the architects. Right. Engineers. That's what we've had an architect on the show before, and he sort of said that we help with that. We can help with that. So I'm, I'm trying to think. So I've got the architect. I turn to them, and I say, I really want it to look like this kind of building and I show them a picture of a building and they say great and the builder is sitting there thinking about can I make that and can I make it at a reasonable price 
And I say, gee, I want to do these kind of things in the building to tell the architect, you know, I need a gymnasium, I need a lunchroom, I need science labs. And then you're sitting there and hearing all this and you're collecting all this list and saying, okay, science labs, heating, cooling, etc. And do you then say, well, what else are you going to do in it? Do you actually get down to the functional, functional use of it and yeah, say, so. gee, do you want locker rooms? Do you say, gee, do you want a wood shop or a, a cooking center? And then, oh, well, if, if you're going to have a cooking center, you got to have ventilation. So is that sort of your role in conjunction with the architect? Because the architect, I would imagine, if they said, oh, here's the cooking center, well, we're going to put an island in, we're going to put a vent in and all this. How does that interaction occur? Well, the kind of buildings that we're involved in are our, the questions that we ask during the design phase usually elevates the level of attention to some of those things you're talking about. Okay. Because we specialize in biomedical research facilities okay. and especially infectious disease research facilities. Yeah, we don't want to have a failure in that. <laughs> no. And so there are a lot of things that we're going to ask about systems that okay. are going to support some of the unique requirements. Like okay. Like if they're going to house animals or okay. Good. going to do research with in infectious diseases and the airflow directions are important. And so sure. there are a lot of things that people just don't think about. Right that we're going to ask the lab directors I see. and the environmental health and safety people mm -hmm. about some of their testing requirements or performance requirements related to biocontainment, for example. So I think your comment of saying there's just a lot of things that people don't think about is extremely at the crux of this. It's just very much the focus of... You know, when, when we're ordinary people on the street thinking about, oh, we're going to do this, there's a lot of things. When we talk to our architect friend, uh, Benjamin Nutter in Topsfield, he sort of unmasked a lot of the things that you didn't think of. And now you're saying for a commercial building or for something that's going to have all of these functions, there's a whole set of layers that we might not understand. Cybersecurity is critical for today's businesses. Savior Labs is a Boston cybersecurity firm that cares for your business and your team. We solve problems so you can focus on what you do best. Just follow the link in the show notes and enter code SECURITY for more information. So it sounds like not only do you call those into view, but then you actually validate them once they're put in. Is that really, is that the, well, if you were to value the sort of importance of what you do, which one is the most important? They're both equally important, but me saying, hey, you need good ventilation in here is one thing, or a scientist saying we need good ventilation, they're not going to know the specs. Do you guys know the specs and say, oh, we need this kind of ventilator, and then what happens with that? Yeah, so during the design phase, owners have, the people who we do repeat business for, they've relied on us to ask questions about the type of systems that are going in, some of the components related to it. A lot of it comes back to the performance verification criteria. Okay. So we actually have a document that's called the PVC, the Performance Verification Criteria. Okay. And it's essentially the pass-fail criteria that's going to be used to measure whether or not a building meets the owner's requirements. Okay. So an example of that would be it's an infectious disease lab, uh -huh. and they want to know that they don't have dirty air going out into the public areas. Okay. Seems good. Yeah, <laughs> that's seems a good like thing. Yeah, a really good yeah. idea. Yeah. So the actual delivery of that means that there are certain redundancies that have to be in place mm -hmm. for your ventilation systems, for your power supply to the building. There usually would be an emergency generator. There will be uninterruptible power supplies that help certain things ride through that mm -hmm. loss of normal power. And so there are components that we know have to be included in a building that may not even appear during the design phase. And we, we need to make sure those are there to make a unique requirement like that be met. Right. So we're sitting here just a few days after Hawaii announced that there was an incoming nuclear missile headed towards their, or an incoming missile headed toward their island. And everybody is criticizing that to say, how could it be that that, could, that mistake could happen so easily? So it sounds like a lot of the things you're doing, not necessarily a <laughs> missile avoidance, missile announcement, is to make sure that the systems that are put in place are actually going to function when they need to function. Do you test them after they've been deployed? So, I mean, you hand over the keys to the building. Are you guys done or do you have to retest them? Some buildings were required to retest, or I'll just put it this way. Some buildings 
are required to be tested by the owners every year. And I see. Some owners will hire us to come back on an annual basis to do performance verifications. We call them APVs, annual performance verification. I see. Especially if it's related to biocontainment. Bio Interesting. So what are the ones that don't have you come back and do it? Do they do it themselves or? Some will do it themselves, but some of them just aren't real critical. I mean, we, we have, I've just talked to you quite a bit about biomedical mm -hmm. research with an infectious disease. That, that happens to be one of our primary areas of focus. Mm -hmm. But we do a lot of other kinds of buildings. Some of them are kind of fun buildings. Mm -hmm. We've done a passive house where it's not even, doesn't have any power to it. Really? Um, because it's a high-performing house in New Hampshire. And we're doing a museum for a car dealer who's getting all these exotic cars. And okay. So that's the kind of a thing that's probably not going to be verified on an annual basis. I see. A, well, museum, are, a lot of museums as well. Are there needs? So we just talked about disease and we've talked about a museum and a house. So there's three radically different buildings there. Yeah. But are there ones that require? I mean, who's requiring doing this? Is it the owner saying, I asked for it, I'm paying for it, I want to make sure it works? Or is it that the government is saying, you need to make sure this stuff works? Well, in, in the case of infectious disease research yep. facilities, it's Center for Disease Control. Okay, so and do you work with them? We don't work with them, but we work with the owners of these facilities yep. who are going to be inspected by CDC. I see, so that's, that's what's going to happen. The CDC right. is going to come in and look at it, and they're going to probably say, show us that this has passed. Yes. And then they hand them your documentation. Yep. Okay, cool. Do you ever get involved in talking with them about that? You know, um, are there questions or, or is it just more, more of a paperwork issue? It's more of a paperwork issue. I mean, we're recognizing the industry. Mm -hmm. We're speaking at the CDC symposium in a couple of weeks. Cool. They have an international symposium on biocontainment. Cool. And we were at that meeting. Oh, wow. Every, every two years that they have it. So we're recognized. We're on standards committees right. relative to defining what performance is required out of systems, especially right. ventilation systems. So there would be, they'd look at the documentation, oh, Cornerstone did this. There'd be a, a relative comfort with that as opposed to Joe's commissioning. They'd say, who's this? I don't know Joe. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, what is this? And they might dig deeper, but you've got a good reputation out there. Yeah, and they'll just look to make sure that our documentation shows that we tested the things that are required right. to a level of scrutiny that... Right. It ought to be taken to some of it's prescriptive, some of it's not. Uh -huh. So they, they rely on us to ask the right questions right. and test appropriately. And now when you go and test, if you have a thousand tests that you have to perform, I can't imagine they would all pass. There must be a lot of, oh, we got to fix this, we got to fix this, we got to fix this. I mean, just having had work done around my house, it's like, oh, that's not right. Mm -hmm. now, do, does that happen? Is it is there some churn in the work? Yeah, so I'll just say you've talked about three different kinds of buildings, from yep. a house to a museum to these high-end biocontainment facilities. I, I don't care which one of those you pick. None of them are going to be done on time. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just the nature of construction projects because construction is complicated. Right. But if, as you increase the sophistication and user requirements for a building, it elevates the challenge to get something finished on time. Now, finishing it on time is one thing. You know, right. The contractor will say, um, I just packed up my tools, they're in my truck, I'm leaving, I'm done. Right. Okay, that, that's not usually defining when an owner of a building says, okay, it's done. It doesn't usually coincide with the contractor leaving. Right. But usually things just have to be done. And when it comes to commissioning, making sure that a building actually works right, we find a lot of issues. We call them commissioning issues. Oh, and okay. One of the most important aspects of working on the projects. And this is a company philosophy mm -hmm. that we have to work very closely with owners, architects, engineers during the design phase. And then during the construction phase, we work with the same people, but more even with the contractors. Mm -hmm. And because it's so hard to get some of these buildings to work right, we really have to engage people in a way that's winsome mm -hmm. and not irritate them. Sure. We don't want people looking at us and saying, oh, no, yeah. here comes Cornerstone. Here comes a commissioning agent. All they want to do is document the living daylights out of any possible thing they find wrong. Right. And then they're going to get paid for finding all this stuff and making us look yeah. like we can't get this building working. No. What we want to do, we go, we are going to find issues. Mm -hmm. To the extent that we can resolve issues when we find them, that is part of our focus. And okay. so our, our interaction with these contractors is to build relationships, to work on this stuff together so when sure. we find yeah. something, we brainstorm it, we document it, right. we hope to not have to have it have it addressed again on a repeated basis, but it really is. It's a quality control process mm -hmm. 
to get the building to do what the owner really needs it to do. Right. And so when it's done, we can all feel good right. that we've worked together to deliver an, an owner a building that really does what it needs to right. do with great proficiency. Well, we've been talking with Dan Frazier of Cornerstone Commissioning, and we're really delighted that you took the time to come in today and look forward to talking in the future. Thank you, Paul. This has been a pleasure. The Edge of Innovation is brought to you in partnership with Savior Labs. Savior Labs exists to help businesses mature and strategize for the future. Learn more about Savior Labs at SaviorLabs.com. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Edge of Innovation, Hacking the Future of Business. For the show notes and more information about Paul, please visit paulparisi.com. The Edge of Innovation is produced by Jacob Young in conjunction with copious amounts of coffee. Music on today's episode was from bensound.com. Paul can be found on Twitter at P.D. Parisi and on LinkedIn at LinkedIn.com slash P.D. Parisi. This episode, like all our episodes, is transcribed and available at PaulParisi.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.